In this lecture, we'll be focusing on the hormone oxytocin, which is produced by the hypothalamus. The two main hypothalamus hormones we need to keep track of are oxytocin and ADH, which stands for antidiuretic hormone. And that one has another name that you sometimes will see, and that is vasopressin. And both of these are peptide hormones. So we've just learned that oxytocin is made by the hypothalamus, but sometimes they'll ask you a more specific question about where it's made. And inside the hypothalamus is a group of cells called the paraventricular nuclei. And these are the cells that will make oxytocin. And to remember this, we're gonna think about how when you jump out of a plane, you're parachuting through oxygen. We talked about the infundibulum in the anatomy section of the endocrine system. And we talked about how it's the highway that passes the hormones from the hypothalamus to the posterior pituitary gland. Just a reminder that they love to ask this question that, about what will happen if you cut the infundibulum. And if you cut that stalk, you're going to lose function of ADH and oxytocin. So you have to be very careful about wording here. So the hormones are produced in the hypothalamus, but they're stored and secreted from the posterior pituitary gland. You'll recognize this slide from our anatomy lectures, but I just wanted to reiterate the location where oxytocin and ADH are stored. Remember, there's a specific cell type in the posterior pituitary called the herring bodies. And the herring bodies are where we store oxytocin and ADH. All right, so this is a very common question that you're asked on the test. Probably the most basic and simplest type of question, and it's on the function of oxytocin and what it does. Oxytocin will help stimulate pregnancy contractions, and it also will help stimulate the milk letdown or milk ejection reflex. And then sometimes on your exams, you'll see more specific types of questions within each of these functions. And so we're gonna go into those now. Most oxytocin questions will include prolactin as a distractor. And that's because their function both involves milk, but the function is very different. Prolactin is gonna help produce milk. And then oxytocin is gonna help with the letdown of that milk. So to remember that, we're gonna think of prolactin as a pro at producing milk. And then for oxytocin, we're gonna imagine that that milk gets stored in that O right there. And when it's time for the milk to be released, that X will pop the O. So we're gonna think of that sharp X right next to this O full of milk. And when it touches that sharp X, that milk is gonna be secreted or released. Sometimes they'll test you on the trigger for the milk letdown reflex. And there are sensory receptors in the mammary gland that will send signals to the hypothalamus which will then send a signal to the posterior pituitary gland to trigger the production of oxytocin, which will cause that milk letdown reflex. And if there's no milk to let down, that's when prolactin comes in and starts creating the milk. So a simple type of question that you'll get is asking what will stimulate the secretion of milk, and they'll always include oxytocin and prolactin in the answer choices. And remember, oxytocin stimulates the secretion of the milk, but prolactin produces the milk. Another name that you may see on the exam is lactogenesis, and that's just a fancy name for the production of milk. So prolactin is in charge of the production of milk. Now we know we have to be on the lookout for that word lactogenesis. We're going to talk about something now called the hypophyseal portal system. Sometimes you'll see it called the hypothalamic hypophyseal portal system, and this is a blood network that connects the hypothalamus to the pituitary gland more specifically to the anterior pituitary gland. So we had talked about the infundibulum connecting the hypothalamus to the posterior pituitary gland. Now we're talking about the hypophyseal portal system connecting the hypothalamus to the anterior pituitary gland. And so that's the first type of question that you get about the portal system is that you have to know that it connects to the anterior pituitary gland, not the posterior. The second type of question you see sometimes is about the hormone type that is transferred on this blood highway. And you'll see a theme here that most of these hormones are gonna trigger the production of some type of anterior pituitary gland hormone with the exception of one. And so all of these will stimulate except for one, and that is dopamine. And you'll see here that I wrote prolactin inhibiting factor, and that's another name for dopamine. So let's go through these names here real quick. So we have the gonadotropin releasing hormone and that's gonna trigger the production of the sex hormones, FSH and LH. Then we have corticotropin releasing hormone, which is gonna trigger upregulation of ACTH. 
And remember that stands for adenocorticotropic hormone. And so it's right here in the name, corticotropin. Then we have growth hormone releasing hormone, and that's gonna turn up growth hormone. And then we have thyrotropin releasing hormone, and that's gonna turn up TSH. So as a review on the question type that you'll see here, most basic level question is just on the name of the hormone that's released through the hypophysial portal system. And then a deeper level of question wants you to know that dopamine is gonna turn down prolactin. It's the only one of these hormones that's gonna turn something down. The other ones turn these hormones up. And then a third type of question that we see wants you to know that oxytocin and ADH are not transferred by the hypophysial portal system. Because remember, those are stored in the posterior pituitary gland in those herring bodies. And sometimes they'll trick you by putting those in as distractors when they're asking you about hormones that move through this blood highway. And sometimes you'll get pathology type questions that will uh, talk about some sort of pathology that will either increase or decrease the function of the hypophysial portal system. And it'll just ask a pretty basic question wanting you to know that that will either turn up or turn down these hormones and the effect it has on those anterior pituitary gland hormones. And so we're just gonna dive in a little deeper here on dopamine. And so just as a review, remember dopamine is a catecholamine made in the medulla of the adrenal glands, which sit right above the kidneys. We've now learned a different name that dopamine goes by, but you have to know that these are the same thing. If we have prolactin plus dopamine, we're gonna inhibit prolactin. And so you have to know that dopamine flows through this hypophysial portal system, much in the same way that these other four hormones will just flow through there. Dopamine is going to turn something down, whereas those other hormones are going to turn something up. And so if you get a question about dopamine and maybe like a blockage in the hypophysial portal system, and so imagine that you turn this off, and so there's no dopamine there to inhibit anything. They want you to know what is not going to be inhibited. They'll always throw oxytocin in there as a distractor. And remember, that goes to the posterior pituitary, not the anterior. So we're not going to pick oxytocin. We're always going to pick prolactin when we're talking about dopamine or the hypophysial portal system. So we just talked in detail about how prolactin is inhibited by dopamine, and now we're introducing another player that can inhibit prolactin, and that is somatostatin. Somatostatin will inhibit a lot of stuff, but the two main things that you're tested on are growth hormone and prolactin. And because somatostatin inhibits growth hormone, sometimes on the exam you'll see a little bit of a deeper layer question about how it will oppose the effect of that hormone we talked about earlier, right here, growth hormone, releasing hormone. And so it can target either that or sometimes they just describe it as inhibiting growth hormone. We're gonna look at the IN right here and that's gonna help us remember that it is an inhibitor. And if you inhibit milk production, because remember prolactin is a pro at milk production. So if you inhibit milk production, you will inhibit growth stat. And stat is a medical term for fast or quick. So that's our memory aid about somatostatin. So you can see that there's a lot of different types of questions about the milk letdown reflex and prolactin and oxytocin. And so now we're gonna move on to the second function of oxytocin, which is to stimulate contraction during labor. And so the trigger for that is gonna be dilation of the cervix. And that's gonna to be to allow room for the baby's head and then at the most broad and surface level, we have to understand that oxytocin will stimulate the smooth muscle of the uterus to increase contractions during labor. And you may not see smooth muscle on the exam. You may see uterine muscle, and you may also see myoepithelial cells. And then just a quick note here that both oxytocin and ADH can help with smooth muscle contraction, but for the most part, oxytocin is the big time player in that and ADH only contributes in a very small way. And I only mention that because on the exam, if you don't see oxytocin as an answer choice, you should choose ADH. But that's a really nitpicky type of question and for the most part, they will test you on oxytocin. The release of oxytocin is gonna be triggered by the baby suckling, by myometrial stretching of the uterus. And then the third trigger for the release of oxytocin is gonna be estrogen which is gonna be in high concentration during pregnancy. Here is the fact card for oxytocin and prolactin. After you go through this, make sure that you move on to the multiple choice questions, and I'll see you in the next video.